What is up, I'm Sergeant Ballistic, but you guys can call me Brian. Thank you for checking out this video. So Nvidia just dropped a new update to Nvidia GeForce Experience. This is a beta version. It's kind of a feedback program where you guys can try it out, let them know what you really, really like and what you wanna see. I found myself using it quite a bit, not only to make sure I have the most up-to-date drivers, but also to um, control all of my shields that I use for using game stream, setting up shadow play or what they call share now to record uh, footage and stuff like that. Just a lot of functionality. So I wanted to do an overview with you guys, but I also wanted to get your opinion. How much do you guys take into account the software suites and kind of ecosystem for these two manufacturers when considering um, making your next GPU buying purchase. I know drivers matter to a lot of people quite a bit, but do software suites like the GeForce Experience and um, the Plays.TV and Raptor uh, suite from AMD, do they play into your buying decisions whatsoever if you know, you're looking at two cards maybe at a similar price point and with uh, very similar performance, are they gonna play any role? So let me know in the comments below, but now let's get into the software. Anybody can download this, all you have to do is go to geforce.com. There's a link to the new GeForce Experience beta release. Click this first link. Then you can go ahead and download the beta. I've already got it downloaded. Once you download it, just install it. It's a next, next, next type thing. Launching GeForce Experience is very simple. I've actually got it pinned down here because I like to have it ready to go so I can check on my drivers before I play any games and specifically before I benchmark. Alternatively, you can get to it by right clicking this little NVIDIA experience thing down here and launch the application. As you can see, we've got this nice new interface that they're sporting. When you first start it up, it'll probably ask you to log in. I do recommend you sign up for an account and log in, not only because you can get updates and all that kind of stuff, but they are doing a number of exclusive giveaways for users of the new GeForce experience in which you can win like a 1080 and some other awesome prizes. So go sign up for that and you're welcome. It'll also probably do a initial scan for games on your system. And this is it just like looking through some common directories like your program files for Steam libraries and Origin libraries and other games. But once it's done, it should launch and you'll be on the home tab in which you'll see all of these supported games which they have optimization options for. Right here you can see that they have a grid view and you can also switch it to a detailed view in which you can see um, the whole list of the games and the details for the games. But very reminiscent of an uh, application like Steam. One cool feature is that in addition to being able to optimize the games, you can actually launch them from here. So this can kind of become your hub, but it's really nice because you'll be changing the details and quality settings, and then you'll want to launch the game very quickly to see what uh, changes that makes. And then you can quit the game, remake some more adjustments and keep doing that over and over again. On top of changing the uh, view, you can also sort things. You can filter by uh, whether you have them favorited or optimized or not. Then over here, you have the more tab. You can scan for games or choose to optimize all games. So clicking on any specific game will take you into the details. So in here, you'll be able to check out all of the settings for the game. On the left, you have the name of them. Then you have the current settings that you have set in the game at the moment. And then what Nvidia feels is the optimal setting for your particular setup based on uh, their kind of research. Up here in the picture, it allows you to see when you click on a specific setting, what that um, setting does. It gives you, I guess, an example of where it is. You can see ambient occlusion, add soft shadows uh, to crevasses and objects that are in close proximity to one another. So it's added detail and stuff like that. So you can get an impression of what this does. Sometimes you're a little you know, hesitant to change the setting or increase it or decrease it because you have no idea what it is. Pretty nice that they have that here. Nvidia actually does some performance guides for a lot of the hot new major titles that are coming out. These are very detailed. And from these, they're able to kind of profile all the different settings and have an idea of what affects performance and quality the most so that you can tune it for your hardware. And that's exactly what it does when you hit auto optimize. It kind of overrides your settings with what they feel are the optimal settings for that game in your hardware. You do have some options though. You can go ahead and open up the custom settings. And in here you have this slider where you can adjust granularly um, kind of what you want um, to favor in terms of quality or performance. 
Me personally, if I'm playing a competitive shooter like Battlefield or CSGO, then I'm going to want to lean on the performance side, but still kind of get as much visual fidelity as I can. I've got a 27 inch Acer G-Sync enabled um, 144 hertz monitor so I want to be able to push as many frames to that as possible so I'll like I said lean to the performance side um, but if I'm playing a game that you know isn't where frame rate isn't all that important maybe like a, something with only a single player campaign I'll try to tune it so I have 60 uh, frames per second all the time and make it look as best as possible there's gonna be some dips here and there you know when a lot of stuff is going on on screen very intensive um, scenes but for the most part you can kind of go by that and I really really like that functionality you can also change your default resolution and what uh, the game launches in by default window borderless is kind of nice if you do a lot of alt tabbing say if you're a streamer a couple of improvements I'd like to see in that area are maybe some profiles that you can set up there so that's you know like I mentioned if I'm doing different things like benchmarking maybe I want to have a profile for this particular game for benchmarking but when I'm actually playing it and trying to actually enjoy it maybe I want to have a different set of settings Battlefield 4 is a good example it has a campaign and it has um, online multiplayer so I might want to have completely different sets of settings for those I think the dream what I would love to be able to see is a target FPS um, kind of text box in there and I can put in um, you know 60 frames per second 120 frames per second 144 frames per second and it'll maybe show me maybe it's not a hundred percent calculated this will get you this but um, you know what type of settings you might have to go to with your particular card in order to achieve that and then you can test it out launch the game from the uh, Infinity experience see if that visual you know quality is good enough for you and if it's not then you can kind of fidget with things so in the next tab over you have your driver section and this is going to show you what the current driver is your game ready driver what version it is the release date one very cool feature is that you can reinstall the driver manually from here you don't have to go and download it it'll automatically re-download it if necessary and reinstall what I imagine is gonna happen here is you're gonna have blocks for all of the older um, you know versions and uh, then you can go in here and look at the uh, release notes and see what the um, improvements were in the top right of the screen you can see you have your profile there and you can go look at your account and I do again suggest you sign up for that if you already haven't taking a look at settings up here in the first tab we have some general information about your system and what's going on you've got the version of GeForce experience you are release highlights where you can see the different features that have been improved and released with uh, every new release of the application frequently asked questions send feedback language uh, your share options I'll talk a little bit about share in this video but really it's so so much um, in that section it's what most people know um, call shadow play but uh, yeah, it's very, very detailed. So I'll do a whole individual video on that. Then you have some driver update settings, whether you automatically download them and then get asked to um, uh, install when you launch the app and whether GeForce uh, Experience will give you a notification of a new um, update that is available. Then you've got rig, your video card, driver version, um, other specs and stuff like that. And below that, you've actually got different NVIDIA kind of specific features where um, you can drop these down and see if your PC meets the specs for that. So game optimization, pretty low specs there, but you can see the cards that they will be supporting, which is very nice. Uh, game stream, um, gonna have some higher requirements, but you can see uh, with my 1070, I'm meeting all that with my system or Ashikage. And then share, um, some minimum specs for that, and you really wanna make sure you're on that list for the different types of cards that are available, and then virtual reality and I'm well above the 970 now, so I definitely meet that. Uh, looking in the bottom right, I'll, I forgot to mention there's also this feedback form where you can uh, click that and then you know give them feedback about any different feature that you might um, want to let them know about. We go on to accounts, it's just literally some account information including your email, so I'm not gonna show that. And then games, um, in here you can see game scan. Uh, it shows the number of games that it's found, and these are the supported games. If you click on this, you can actually go to a list of the supported games, and they're always updating that. And you know, with new games coming out, you can uh, be sure that they're gonna try to get, especially games using um, NVIDIA GameWorks technologies optimized so that you can use them. And then you've got your scan location. By default, it automatically added almost all of these, 
which is pretty awesome that they're pretty smart about you know knowing where people like to store things i did have to add a couple where i've kind of installed um some games on a uh, ssd that i have that it probably just didn't know to look for because it's in this weird um weird location but you can add as many as you want and then hit scan now and it'll rescan all those directories for supported games and finally up here you have auto optimize newly added games i have that turned off because as i mentioned i kind of have some different requirements for depending on what i'm doing if i'm playing or benchmarking and what type of game i'm playing uh, the last tab in here, you're going to see your game stream options. Here is an area where you can add a bunch of game streamable apps that you want to be available on your shield if you're streaming. And um, that's very simple. You just, you know, go to an application and double click it and then it will be uh, shareable. Um, I'm not sure about desktop right now. I forget how that works. But then over here, you'll be able to add and remove uh, shield devices. I have almost every single shield that's come out. I really love those devices. Haven't set it up on this computer yet because I'm trying to get uh, my living room set up, but it's great. Um, this is how you manage it and how you do it. If you guys want to see a video on game stream and how it works and how things are going with it, uh, let me know in the, in the comments and I'll try to do that for you. The last thing up here that I do want to mention is the open share settings. This is also on a keyboard stroke and that is alt Z. But when you open that up, you can go in here and share what most people are still calling um, shadow play. Shadow play is just kind of the ability to do instant replay recording and they're kind of rebranding that but um, a lot of details in here this is where you'll be able to change around all those settings and um, just control how you're able to record, what quality you have, if you want to broadcast to Twitch or YouTube um, you can do all that in here. If you have questions about this or that, you know, the GeForce experience um, in general, let me know in the comments. I'll try to get those answers. If you guys would like to see a video on the AMD side of things, their Raptor software and plays that TV software, um, let me know. I'll be happy to do that. And if you want to maybe eventually see a comparison video, to, you know, if that is something that you really, really want out of, um, you know, your hardware producers having good software going along with it, then maybe that'll help you make a decision for your next uh, GPU. But thank you guys for watching. Go ahead and give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs down if you did not. Remember to comment, subscribe if you already haven't. I got a lot of new videos coming up. In fact, I have several GPUs we are going to be talking about on the channel. We've got a 1070 right there. We've got a 480 right there. Hopefully when the 1060 drops, I will be um, getting one of those in for review as well. I'm going to be doing builds around both of these and you know, really excited to bring you guys more content. Uh, follow me on your favorite social media site. Thank you guys for watching again. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.